Good day and welcome to the North Carolina frontier in 1780. When the militia is mustered to go fight for, uh, Patrick Ferguson uh, and his army of Tories at Kings Mountain, most of the men on the frontier are going to be carrying rifles like this one that I've got here. Now this is actually a bit of an old-fashioned weapon at the time of the revolution. This would date back to the 1720s or 30s in style. The current style is for the barrel to be a little bit smaller in diameter and for the barrel to be about 18 inches longer than this. So this is a weapon that you might have inherited from your grandfather, but it's still a very lethal weapon. It's not too different from some of the rifles that are being carried by the Hessian soldiers that are over here fighting for the crown. Now when the call goes out to muster, uh, you would be taking this uh, hunting rifle primarily uh, because you probably don't have many other weapons around and this is what you would uh, have. Now I'm going to show you today how to load and fire one of these hunting rifles. Unlike the military muskets, there is no standardized drill or manual of arms for loading and firing these. These are loaded and fired individually by individual soldiers rather than have everybody do it in unison. Uh, and so uh, you would do this uh, in, a, in a way that you have gotten used to. So the first thing you're going to do uh, is to uh, measure out your gunpowder. So you're going to take your powder horn like this and you will take the rifle in one hand and you will take the uh, powder horn in the other. Take the stopper out with your third hand. With your, Then you would uh, measure the gunpowder out into this until this hollowed out uh, deer antler is level full. And then with your fourth hand you've got to contrive to uh, stick this back in the stopper so you don't spill the gunpowder or the powder horn. Now most people of course are going to run out of hands. Uh, so you can see how awkward this is, and you've got to do this while you're standing up on a battlefield where people are shooting at you. So now that I've got the uh, gunpowder level full in here, I'm going to pour this down the muzzle. And that is step number one. Now the next thing you're going to have to do is to get a musket ball. So you're going to have uh, uh, your musket balls in a leather bag perhaps, but I don't like to have that because you have to untie it, take a musket ball out, tie it back up, put it back in your pouch here. Uh, it's very awkward and inconvenient. Uh, I prefer to carry the musk balls in a shot pouch like this. So you would take this out and you would pour a couple of these out into the palm of your hand. Uh, and then, uh, contriving to get the stopper back into this, you are going to uh, put the musk balls in your mouth temporarily and you will hold them there. Now, the next thing you have to do is to get a patch, a greased cloth, out of the patch box here. So you're going to take out one of these greased cloths and you're going to put this back in like that. And now you're going to put the cloth over the muzzle. Then you'll take out your musket ball and push it down into the barrel. Now you've got to uh, take out a, pocket, a, a knife here like this and then you would trim the cloth around the bear, around the musket ball here. And then you've got to put the knife back in the, in the holder. Uh, if you've got a large piece of cloth, you're going to have to roll it back up and put it back in the patch box. A very awkward thing to do here, so I prefer to have mine cut in approximately the right size and shape. Now you have to push the ball firmly to the bottom of the barrel. To do this, you will draw your ramrod, and then you will push the ball firmly to the bottom. Now, even though the cloth has been greased, the ball fits very tightly, and this takes a little bit, a bit, a bit of work here. You can't just uh, hammer this down because you break your wooden ramrod. Now, after the ball is firmly put to the bottom, you will then uh, be able to put your ramrod back into the holder here. And now you've loaded your weapon finally, but it's not ready to fire because you have not yet primed it. And remember, all the time you're doing this, people on the battlefield will be shooting at you. Now, to prime this, uh, step forward if you like. Uh, or you can see this a little better, you will put the rifle on half cock. That pulls the flint out of the area of the pan. The pan is this little uh, tray here. Now you're going to have to put some priming powder into that for a rifle, and that's a special fine grain gunpowder. It's a little different from what you have in your barrels. Now some people will carry their powder in a uh, hollowed out deer antler like this. It doesn't take much, so you don't need a big one. Or a small uh, powder horn. Uh, I, however, uh, am fortunate enough to have a brass priming flask left over from my service in the French and Indian War with the South Carolina Provincials. In those days we were using the Bland 53 drill, 1753, and we were equipped with priming flask for our military muskets. So we're going to turn this upside down here, and we're going to put a little bit of gunpowder in the priming pan. Now I've got to put the cap back onto this, and now we will close the, the hammer here. That will trap the gunpowder. Now you might want to take a step back here. 
Uh, oh, before you do, I should uh, say that here you can see there are two triggers to this. This is com quite common with hunting rifles. Uh, you'd really like to have a, a hair trigger here. That is a trigger which goes off if you just touch it, because if you have a stiff trigger, you might cause the musket to wobble while you're pulling the trigger. That will throw off your aim. So the Germans over 100 years ago have invented this uh, classic thing called uh, uh, a... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the uh, special trigger here. Now, what you will do is if you have an easy shot, you will pull the front trigger and the musket will go off if you're in a hurry, for example. If you are, uh, uh, however, if you are taking a, a difficult shot, you will pull the rear trigger, f trigger first. Um, that will uh, cause a little click on the inside. The front trigger is now a hair trigger. The, see, the danger with a hair trigger is that it might go off if you don't want it to. Uh, so it's difficult, to, uh, dangerous to walk around with a hair trigger. So we are going to pull the musket on full cock, line it up in our sights. Now, because we're on a battlefield, we would uh, just be using the front trigger here. We're not going to worry about uh, taking careful aim, taking careful aim at your uh, opponent, and pull the trigger. Now, how fast can we do this? Approximately uh, once every two minutes, uh, for some people. Uh, they can do that on a practice field, however, I have to tell you that on an actual battlefield they're probably not that quick. You get nervous, you spill your gunpowder, you drop your ramrod, all sorts of bad things happen, you swallow your musket balls. Uh, probably every minute to a minute and a half is as fast as you can do this on a battlefield. This concludes our firing demonstration today of the Frontier Rifle in 1780. Thank you for coming today.